Hey guys, it's Bonita Doodles and in true Bonita Doodles style for those who have followed me for a while know that there's always a technical hiccup somewhere along the line and guess what? I recorded my beautiful intro, I was really happy with it and then discovered I hadn't plugged my microphone in. As I say, it's not a Bonita Doodles video unless something technically goes wrong and I have to redo something or something has to go in the bin or it just looks really, really, really bad. So let's start again. Hi! Today I'm going to be teaching you how we are going to use these magical wands of colour by teaching you how to draw a simple illustration and we're going to use these pens to adorn it to make it beautiful and just show you how you can take something really simple and just add these sorts of pens and yeah make it crazy good so the pens that i'm going to be using today are aqua pens and i've used these for a really long time now they're absolutely fantastic pens and they're water activated markers so they're dye based they are not pigment based so when you use a watercolor palette that's where you're looking at pigment base when you use markers any watercolor markers watercolor pens I'm just seeing if I had any of my other ones around and I don't um, then they're all dye based so they're slightly slightly different so the archival quality is is actually a bit less in them but the vibrancy is in your face gorgeousness so I've used these pens for a really really long time and I want to be able to show you how easy they are to use to make stunning artworks you do not have to use these pens so if you don't have them don't be afraid to try this either using a palette uh, pencils watercolor pencils any water activated media will do this project so the other thing I'm using deco color pen and this is silver and I've got silver gold and I've got a copper color but I've chosen this one to do in silver I think unless I change my mind halfway through so all you need is some watercolor paper a silver or gold pen and some watercolor pens and yeah let's get cracking Okay, so the watercolour paper that I'm using today is the Spectrum Noir 9x12 300GSM and it is very, very good quality paper and it's one that I use actually an awful lot and I tend to go to this for all my watercolours because it just allows the water to really feed through the paper and spread that colour out. If you've ever used watercolour markers in the past and found that actually they haven't worked particularly well for you, or you have struggled to get your pens to move around the paper more than likely the problem is is you are using the wrong paper type so do bear that in mind should you be looking to do this project going forward that that's what you need to do you need to have a really good watercolor paper so let's crack on grab yourself a pencil and an eraser if you're like me and become indecisive so i'm just going to grab my really basic pen here and today I want to have a go at doing a whale so I think the shape that we're going to do is we're going to do it horizontally we're just going to do a bit of a light sketch and I quite fancy the idea of him sort of diving into the sea and I think we're going to look at maybe doing like a um, like a, a blue whale um, I don't really know actually we can do whatever whale you like um, I'm, I'm going to press a bit harder so hopefully you can see what I'm doing through the camera and we're just going to give him a very basic tail shape at the top here we don't have to be 100% accurate with our sketch because the idea of this is to be doing a really nice loose style watercolour So we're going to lighten the pencil work up a little bit I think before we go ahead and apply the paint because the the thing with watercolour is if you apply paint over the top of your pencil you can't erase your pencil away now depending on the colour you do if you do something quite dark then it won't necessarily actually be a problem because you can look then at going over your line work and it will disappear under the dark colours but I do recommend just grabbing a bit of blue tack which you'll see in a moment and we'll lighten up those pencil lines as I say we're just going for 
pretty simple shapes and lines. I'm wondering if that's far back enough for me. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is later on either go over with the silver pen or I may even bring a white pen in. We'll go with the flow today, shall we? Let's just let's just go with the flow. Now, there we go. Okay, so we're probably going to do this more than likely when we add the paint, but I'm just going to decide where I want his mouth to be. And I think I want his eye around here. Can you, yeah, you can just about see that. And then we'll just bring that down. I'm not happy with these and I think they're too far forward. Okay, so yeah, I am happy with the shape and where they are now. And that's essentially the hardest job done. Okay, so the next thing really is picking your colors and you wanna swatch before you go ahead and do any actual colouring on your paper. Another thing I forgot to say that you may need a cup, a plate, something round, a bowl, anything like that because behind him I want to have like the circle of color that we're looking for. I've decided to use the larger one that I have here. Rather than try and have it further forward, I'm gonna have it further back. And the reason being is that I've decided that I want to do three of them. A little one down here, and then I'm gonna grab my whoop, other one that I have. And then I'm gonna probably do a smaller one over here somewhere so let's grab our colors now this is where I need you to essentially let go and have fun so what we're going to do is just put the color anywhere and if you want to be precise that's entirely up to you but I suggest having a little bit of freedom with this and enjoying it really so let's lighten up our line work you want to work on dry paper so don't wet your paper first because we want to control where the flow of water goes. So I'm going to start by putting patches of the lake blue on the top. So where we drew that line to be his head underneath, we're going to leave that the slate color. So we're just going to do some patches of the lake blue. And then we're going to do some patches of the sage. You can see how rough I'm being. I really am being rough and ready here. Get a fairly good size brush. So number 10 normally is what I use for this. And we're just gonna saturate the brush. Don't oversaturate your paper. And just work over where you've put that color. You can either brush and then mix the two together, or you can just wet and dab it down and just let the water run. So there's a couple of ways that you can do it. If you're worried that you're seeing pen lines, give it time for the water to soak through the paper. Don't try and scrub it out because if you overwork watercolor paper, you'll start to eat your paper. So just give it a bit of time to do what it needs to do. And eventually over that time, all the colors will bleed out and have a bit more of a natural blend than probably what you're seeing on your paper. So I'm gonna to swap to a smaller brush in a minute just so I can get some of the shapes that I want without going over. And I don't suppose it matters so much actually if you go into your areas where your gold or silver will be because um, as I say, that will get covered anyway. So it's not a major problem. And I quite like the patches of dark and light and the white that you get because you get that hard, sharp edge of your watercolor where it's met the dry edge of the paper and it gives you a really nice almost outlined effect and I really like that but you can be as delicate as light as precise you know you just have fun with this there's no rules to it and that's what I love about these pens so these patches of white here I'm going to leave them exactly where they are because I like to see that and you can see where you've got these nice strong edges happening here. Now, while you have a wet brush, get one of your pens or a brush or something pretty sturdy and just tap any excess color off your brush out into your white space. 
So you should have something that roughly looks like this, bit of a mess. You can get a little bit of an idea of what it looks like, but that's exactly how I like it. Now you're gonna clean your brush off and you're gonna keep it wet, but not excessive wet. With a clean, wet brush, you're just gonna splash over the top. Can you see the areas developing in here where the water where has splashed on has actually started to remove some of the color and it gives you this veining that you can see. It's a really fun way of giving them texture. We need to wait patiently for that to dry so I shall be back in a minute. Okay, so while we're waiting for it to dry a little bit more as my hairdryer has magically disappeared, we are going to shimmy shake your metallic color, whichever you've decided, as I said, mine's Deco Color Premium Prime Premio, just because one P isn't enough. Give it a good old shake. You need to make sure you can hear your ball bearing, um, because if you don't hear the ball bearing, it means that your mic is not going to be mixed up properly. So just give it a good shake. The one that I have here, the silver, has such a beautiful shine on it. But you can see how much of a finish, a shine that that silver gives you. And we are now going to do the bottom half, which we decided from my set would be the slate. And I'm not going to worry about cleaning the brush off. I'm going to just splosh what we have. And then I've got more water on my brush and we're going to go over the top like we did before because we want his underbelly to have a bit of texture. So you can see just adding those bits of water has just given it a really, really nice mottled effect there. Okay, so let's get this filled in. Just using the edge of the nib just to try and help me get some fine line going. I'm hoping his the top half certainly is, but I'm hoping his belly is down here is dry enough. Okay, so there you have the big one done. My pen hates me for using it on this texture paper. I think I've upset it. I think that works really really nicely i am going to do the art liner i think let's let's have a bit of a i said i was going to do it let's do it so i'm just going to give him texture in his lines and i'm not going to be super careful about keeping all the watercolor inside those lines so i'm going to go i don't know if this is the way that they go but as i say i'm not being overly precious about being precise just going to with my pen just add some dots on the back one here and what we're doing with adding these dots is almost adding shading and it just gives it the idea that there's a bit of depth going on that is you know one bit's a bit darker than the other if my pen is not too angry with me I'm just going to do some dots on him quite random not too close together just so if he has a bit of movement it picks up the light that's all you want so we used our biggest circle and just to make sure that i can actually go over the line i am going to bring in my black posca pen i really am naughty i did say that's all you need at the beginning but hey ho art develops and sometimes you just want to let the creativity go so please don't be mad with me go okay so let's grab and make sure that I uh, get the right size ones as I cannot remember what size I did and there we have so far our whale 
And you know what? I'm just gonna do a couple of final touches and that's because apparently I don't know when to leave things alone, which isn't unusual. And it's up to you if you wanna do this. Again, go with the flow. See where the mood takes you. It does not matter whether you decide to join in or not. But I am going to only one thing left to do when you have done yours and that is to sign it i would love to see if you have a go at this please don't hesitate to tag me in any way that you share your beautiful design because i really really would love to see it and hopefully you've enjoyed this quick instructional video have fun guys i shall see you guys in the next video bye